you've put in the hard work, you've made the effort of getting ready and passing your written test, of passing your physical test, of uh, you made it through the interview. The panel interview is by far the hardest and most difficult part of this entire hiring process. And now you get invited to a chief's interview. This makes a lot of candidates really nervous. They don't really know what to expect. Quite honestly, there's not a lot of information even out there on the internet as far as what to expect and what kind of questions you're gonna get and what's it gonna be like because it varies so much. So in this quick video, I just wanna give you a primer, I guess, on how to approach the Chief's interview, what you can expect is going to happen in the Chief's interview, um, and how to handle it and so that you can get through this process and finish up the whole hiring process and get hired. So if you find this uh, information helpful, click the like button below, subscribe to the channel. You guys have been awesome. You've been very helpful and responsive. And the more you guys interact with me, the more I can know what you guys want, what you guys think is good, not good. So let's get right into it. If you're new to the hiring process, the way it typically when you go through the entire hiring process, process, a city or a fire district or whoever's hiring you has to spend a lot of time and money just taking you through this big long process. So when you get to the chief's interview, it's typically towards the end of the process. You've already filled out an application, you've already done a fitness test or submitted a fitness test certificate, depending on where you are, every, every place does it a little differently. Um, you've already done a panel interview, which might not necessarily cost them money, but it costs them time. They have to bring in their officers and sit in front of you and all of that. If you make it to a chief's interview, the good news is that they're already really interested in you as a candidate. Uh, they already have asked you all the questions. And by the way, if you're interested in preparing for the panel interview, uh, I'll put a link right here. That's a quick one hour primer on everything you can expect from very beginning to very end, how to follow up and all of that. And a lot of the stuff I'm gonna reference in, reference in this video will be found as the, in there as well. Um, but if you're at the Chief's interview, they already know you, they already know what you're about, they already like you. They're doing the Chief's interview because the Chief, who's essentially gonna be your boss, wants to get to know you more on a personal level. They already know your past, they already have your resume, they already have all that kind of stuff. He just want he or she wants to just sit down, talk to you, find out more about who you are, and whether or not he actually wants you working for him or her. So what can you expect? It's gonna be all the same rules that we talk about in that video that I posted before about the interview. All those same rules still apply. You need to dress professional. You need to, to look people in the eye. You need to shake hands firmly. You need to you, uh, you need to prepare for this. You need to have your answers and your reasons for why you're there and all of that already in the top of your mind. You need to look confident. You need, you need to prepare. All those same rules for the panel interview still apply, but this is going to be a little more, um, a little more personal, a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Typically in a chief's interview, it's just you and the chief. Every once in a while though, I have heard if the department has uh, assistant chiefs, maybe the assistant chief, or if there's multiple assistant chiefs, will sit in on it, maybe it's you and two people. Um, I've also heard of the mayor or the safety director for whatever city or district or wherever you're working sitting in there as well. So don't be surprised if one of those people show up too. Same rules still apply though. Treat them as though anybody else, refer to them as sir or ma'am, or by their title, if it's the mayor, refer to them as mayor, and so on. Um, like I said, this is going to be a little bit more personal, a little bit more conversational. They're going to focus on, and in that video about the interview, you hear me talk about the four different types of questions. Who questions, why questions, what questions, and how questions. This is going to focus more on who questions and why questions. They already know what you can do. Like I said, they already have copies of your resume. They want to know why you're there. So don't be surprised if you get the question of why do you want to be a firefighter? Why do you want to work for this department? That's a common question that comes up in chief's interviews. And the interview is probably going to start out with, hey, Mike, nice to meet you. Tell me about yourself. That's again, that's your 30 seconds, one minute to shine. Give them the highlights of your adult life or your life or the significant events that went on. And then it just kind of turns into a conversation from there. So one thing that I do want to call out though is if you have some sort of, uh, some, like a criminal past, let's say you had a DUI or let's say you had a misdemeanor or maybe you got fired from a job or something like that and you still make it to the chief's interview, that's a really, 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 really good sign. That means they know about it, they're well aware of it and they're, on, they're still interested in hiring you. However, 
you will probably get asked about it. If you haven't already in your panel interview, you'll probably get asked about it in your chief's interview. And two things you need to do. You need to take responsibility for whatever it was that happened or whatever it was that you did. I don't care what the story was. I don't care what the situation was. You found yourself in a bad situation. You got yourself there. You need to own that and be responsible for that. And then the other thing you need to do is talk about the actions that you took to remedy that. Maybe, maybe when you were 17, you were just an idiot and you got fired from a job because you stopped showing up because you thought your boss was a jerk. Okay, not a good thing, not a good look, but it happens. People do stupid things all the time. Take responsibility for that. Talk about how you've never since done that and how you now approach somebody if you have a disagree with agreement with them and go from there. So other than that, I guess to sum all this up, uh, the best advice I could give you is act as though you're going to meet your significant other's parents, right? You're, you're just, hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Uh, be very professional. Be very nice. Be very, uh, talkative is not the right word. Be very conversational. You got to be yourself, but you got to be confident and you'll be prepared. So keep those things in mind. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.